Welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. Uh, with uh, the rise in COVID cases in the community, I thought I would highlight uh, two things. Number one, how masks work, and secondly, how masks can decrease the severity of disease. These are the two points I want to kind of discuss today. The masks come in many styles and shapes. Generally, they're layers of fibers that are woven tightly together, and the laws of physics dictate how uh, these fibers uh, prevent infection. Tightly woven masks in general are better uh, and uh, the, an example of a real tightly woven mask is N95 but any mask will work and here's how they work. The coronavirus is the size of the smallest particle. Here uh, on this I have a slide that shows three particles. One that is large, uh, greater than 0.5 microns. Another one that's between 0.1 to 0.5 microns and the smallest one is less than 0.1 micron. The coronavirus is usually the size of the smallest particle but travels inside these bigger droplets. So when these particles hit these fibers, they're trapped. The fibers present a dense forest that the particles need to navigate through and the laws of physics by which these particles are traveling then uh, interact with the fibers and the mask captures them. The smallest particles are bounced around by the air in a random zigzag manner, increasing the time they spend in the fiber forest and thereby increasing their chance of getting captured. Loose fitting masks and those pressed against facial hair can allow aerosols to leak. And it's become clear that cloth masks, even though they're not as effective as N95, are still effective at reducing transmission. So, in other words, something is better than nothing. Of course, uh, we had talked earlier about how good ventilation practices were the social distancing of at least six feet and you're, we're not in a space where there are other people that are tightly packed can prevent these droplets from even entering the mask. So that's one strategy uh, straight up. And then the second strategy would be how these masks then prevent these smaller particles uh, uh, from getting inside our respiratory system. The second thing that masking does is it decreases the amount of virus that gets in. There's been a concept of minimum effective dose of medicine. In other words, for example, if you take a tablet of aspirin, it helps. But if you take a quarter of a tablet of aspirin, it's not enough for it to cause its mechanism or actions. In a similar way, the total amount of virus that gets in is proportionate to the disease we get. In other words, the larger amount of virus that gets in, there's been more severe disease. The uh, there's some studies that have shown that in certain cruise ships, for example, in, Ar in an Argentinian cruise ship where all the people were given N95 masks, the number of asymptomatic infections were much higher, suggesting that even though they got exposed to it, they didn't get as sick as the other cruise ship uh, sicknesses that we've seen. Also, uh, case fatality ratios, in other words, the number of people who die have been lower in, pay in countries where there's universal masking, such as Taiwan or uh, other places uh, where culturally masks are more acceptable. Ultimately, I think combating this uh, epidemic will require uh, driving down the transmission rate, combating the severity of disease with medicines, oxygen, etc. that we do in the hospital setting, uh, and of course vaccinations, and I think that should hopefully roll out over the next few months. So the top line message to all of us is do all these things starting from the outside to the inside and we had talked about in earlier posts how exercise and eating right and sleeping right etc help boost the immune system so that even if the virus does get in you have a greater chance of fighting it off thank you and we'll see you next week